Welcome back to my video tutorial on development of urinary system. Here comes part 3 in which we will learn the development of male and female urethra. Let's see the development of male urethra. Male urethra is divided into three parts. Proximal prostatic part surrounded by prostate gland, middle membranous part piercing the perineal membrane and distal spongy part or penile part of urethra. Most of the male urethra develops from pelvic and phallic parts of definitive urogenital sinus. Let's see the development of prostatic part of male urethra. By the end of 8th week of development, dorsal wall of pelvic part of urogenital sinus receives caudal portions of mesonephric ducts in the form of ejaculatory ducts. It also receives caudal united portions of paramesonephric ducts in the form of sinoutricular cord which projects into the lumen of the sinus as mullerian tubercle or mullerian eminence. As most of the paramesonephric ducts degenerate in male, only the caudal part remains as prostatic utricle which opens into the sinus through mullerian tubercle which remains as a midline mucosal elevation in the dorsal wall of prostatic urethra known as colliculus seminalis. It receives the openings of prostatic utricle above and ejaculatory ducts below. Here is the interior of prostatic part of male urethra showing its dorsal wall. Here are the openings of ejaculatory ducts over the colliculus seminalis. In relation with the openings of ejaculatory ducts, development of prostatic part can be studied as part above and part below the ejaculatory ducts. The point to be understood here is, after forming the mucous membrane of internal trigone of urinary bladder, the mesodermal cells from the caudal portions of mesonephric ducts proliferate and form the dorsal wall of prostatic urethra above the ejaculatory ducts. Whereas its ventral wall develops from endoderm of vesicourethral part of urogenital sinus. The part below the ejaculatory ducts develops from endoderm of pelvic part of urogenital sinus. Now let's see the development of membranous part of male urethra. Here it is. It develops completely from endoderm of pelvic part of urogenital sinus. Let's see the development of spongy part of male urethra. Most of it develops from endoderm of phallic part of urogenital sinus. Here the image is showing ventral view of cloacal membrane which is divided into urogenital membrane in front and anal membrane behind. Such urogenital membrane surrounded by migrating mesodermal cells from primitive streak forming genital folds medially and genital swellings laterally. They aggregate at the cephalic end of the urogenital membrane to form genital tubercle which plays a major role in the development of spongy part. Here is the sagittal view of tail end of the embryo showing phallic part of urogenital sinus here and here is the genital tubercle at the cranial end of urogenital membrane. The mesodermal cells within the genital tubercle proliferate and elongates the tubercle in the form of phallus which acts as the precursor of penis. In females it is rudimentary and forms clitoris. Such phallus is surrounded by ectodermal cells with the core of mesodermal cells. Further, the phallus elongates by the proliferation of mesodermal cells and shows a longitudinal groove on its undersurface which is known as primary urethral groove. On either side it is surrounded by genital folds and genital swellings. Behind it is continuous with urogenital membrane. At this stage, the endodermal cells 
from the phallic part of urogenital sinus proliferate to form a solid cellular plate sagittally which extends into the developing phallus till the base of glans penis further the urethral plate undergoes canalization by the degeneration of central cells and remain as a tubular endodermal diverticulum within the developing penis here is the cross section of developing penis here is the primary urethral groove on its under surface and here is the canalized urethral plate at this stage the ectodermal cells lining the urogenital membrane proliferate and extend along the floor of this groove further the membrane ruptures so that the primary urethral groove opens into the canalized urethral plate as a result a deep definitive urethral groove is formed now the genital folds lying on either side of this groove start fusing with each other from behind forwards till the base of glans penis where they leave an orifice known as primitive urethral orifice at this stage the ectodermal cells lining the under surface of glans penis start proliferating to form a solid cellular plate which grows longitudinally inwards and extends between the primary urethral orifice and the tip of phallus further the ectodermal cells from the caudal surface of this plate start disintegrating to form an ectodermal groove here is the ectodermal groove developing on the under surface of glans penis meanwhile the ectoderm lining the tip of the phallus invades the glans penis grows towards the floor of ectodermal groove further the bottom of the groove ruptures and its margins fuse with each other to form an ectodermal canal the proximal end of the canal fuses with the primary urethral orifice whereas its distal end remains as permanent urethral orifice at the tip of glans penis while the ectodermal part of spongy urethra is developing genital swellings fuse in the midline to form scrotum now let's summarize the development of three parts of male urethra the dorsal wall of prostatic part above the ejaculatory ducts develops from mesoderm of mesonephric ducts whereas its ventral wall develops from endoderm of vesicourethral part of urogenital sinus prostatic part below the ejaculatory ducts develops from endoderm of pelvic part of urogenital sinus similarly membranous part also develops from endoderm of pelvic part of urogenital sinus spongy part up to the base of the glans penis develops from endoderm of phallic part of urogenital sinus whereas within the glans penis it develops from ectoderm the points to be remembered here are male urethra develops from three germ layers most of it develops from endoderm of urogenital sinus only the dorsal wall of prostatic part above the ejaculatory ducts develops from mesoderm whereas the spongy part within the glans penis develops from ectoderm let's see the development of female urethra the entire female urethra develops from endoderm of vesicourethral and pelvic parts of urogenital sinus as the phallic part of urogenital sinus forms the vestibule into which the urethra opens now it's time to learn few congenital anomalies hypospadias in which the external urethral orifice is seen on the under surface of penis based on its position it is classified into three types balanic type where the opening is seen at the base of the glans penis penile type where the opening is seen on the under surface of body of the penis complete perineal type where the opening is seen within the perineum in the midline epispadias where the external urethral orifice is seen on the dorsal surface of body of the penis congenital stenosis of urethra the commonest part of male urethra undergo stenosis is membranous part anourethral fistula 
where the anal canal opens into membranous part of male urethra which is secondary to imperforate anus here is the end of part 3 where we have learned the development of male and female urethra thank you for your patient listening keep learning